Hey, what's up guys? In this video today, I want to make a desktop application to execute and keep track of command line processes. I'm going to do the whole thing using PHP. So let's get started. I'm cool. Yeah. cool, so to build this project, I'm going to be using Laravel, Livewire and native PHP. Laravel is going to be the framework. Livewire is going to be the way that we interact at the front end. Um, and it's a cool tool if you don't want to use JavaScript. And um, I'm going to package the whole thing into a desktop application using this tool called native PHP. So it's going to be pretty fun. Let's just get started and create a Laravel project. So to do that, we use Composer and we use the create project um, setting. Cool. And I'm going to use preferred dist here. And we're going to get it from the Laravel package. And I'm going to call this project uh, process runner. Once that's done, I'm going to CD into that project. I'm going to open it in VS Code. Then the first thing I want to do is change the database from MySQL to SQLite. And then we can get rid of these env variables. And let's just test that it works by going um, PHP artisan serve. And then we can go to our local host. And it looks awesome. Cool. So the first thing we want to do is create a process model and a process table. So I'm just going to kill the server and then make a model and a migration by going PHP artisan uh, make model. I'm going to call it process. And I also want the migration. Let's go to that process migration. And OK, cool. So we have an ID. That's cool. We also want to keep track of the name of the process. So let's make another field here called string name and then i also want to keep track of what the process should run so i'm going to call that command then when a process executes i want to keep track of its process id so i can kill it and i'm going to make that an integer field and call that pid for process id and then i also want to keep track of the output of each process and to do that i'm going to be keeping a file so when the process executes all its output would be sent to a file and i want to just keep track of that file's location here so output file. Cool. Once that's done, actually, before that's done, I want to make sure that these fields are nullable because when we initially create a process, these won't be populated. So once that's done, let's uh, migrate those. So PHP artisan migrate. And we don't have a database yet, so let's make one. And cool. Now we can create a process. So I'm going to go to that process model. And then I don't want this has factory because we're not going to be using it. I want to create a function to execute this process. So let's make a function here and I'm going to call it execute. And this function is basically going to run, run the command. So let's call it execute. And we're going to pass exec a command to run. And that command will be the command that we've given the process. So like if we go this command, Dot, um, we want to echo all its output to an output file. So let's attach an output file. And then we want this process to run in the background and also echo out its process ID. So to do that, we'll just um, concatenate um, so two and one. And then we also want to echo out the process ID. Cool, and we'll pass through this command to exec. And then we also need to create this output file. So to do that, I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to camel case it. And then I'm going to generate like a random string ID. So string, use this Oops, string, UID. <laughs> I can get it. There we go. And I'm going to import the string class from illuminate. Cool. And this should work. So just so you know what this does, if I open up the terminal and it's like ping google.com and then, well, I can echo out like something to a file here. I'm just going to call this out file text. And then I want this to continue running when I close and also echo out standard and um, error output to this file. So standard and error output. 
and then continue running and then also echo out the process ID. So echo dollar one. So now this is the process ID and that was what was returned from executing this. And now I can see there it should be an output file and here it's populating uh, with the output from that command. And now I can kill that process going 150505 and it terminated our ping command. Cool. So let's also just delete this file. And we want to capture that output here after running exec. So let's call this out. And now we can get that process ID from this out variable because exec basically um, updates its output variable when this command executes. So let's update our model with what just happened. So we can go this and then the process ID is equal to out the first variable there. And then the output file is going to be that output file that we just created here. Then we want to save this model. And now we have a way to execute a process. So let's actually create a process. So to do that, I'm going to open up Tinker. And then I'm going to go API models process. This won't work because we need to enable mass assignments for our process. So to do that, let's update protected guarded fields and then just set that to a blank array so that we can create a process here with mass assignment and then go back to Tinker and then copy this and we want to create one and I'm going to call this uh, ping Google. So the name of the process would be called ping Google and the command will be basically what we just ran now, which is uh, pinggoogle.com. And process not found. And that's because it's not API models, it's app models. Cool, we've created a process. Now we should be able to execute that process. So if we go, let's find that process. So P is equal to, um, let's go process first. Ugh. I have to just qualify the namespace. So it'll be app models process first. And now we can execute this here, execute. Cool, and now we should see, uh, you know what it's gonna do? It's gonna create a file in our base directory, but I don't wanna store this file here. It's working. Um, but I actually want to store this file inside our storage path. So let's go here and let's just use our storage path. Cool. And then let's see um, what the process ID of this model is. It's 151043. So we should just be able to kill this process. Cool. And I think the process actually finished. And we can check that here if we go back to file it should have some output yep it finished so let's delete this file we don't need it anymore but let's make a way that we can actually just kill the process using um, our model so I'm gonna make another function called kill and if there's no process ID I'm just gonna return because there's nothing to kill then basically to kill a process, we can just go exec and it's just going to be this kill command um, with the process ID. Cool, and we have an issue here and let's because I didn't close that off. Now we should be able to execute and kill a process. Let's try that. We'll go back to Tinker. Let's find this process, let's execute it. Then we should see a file created in storage. So if we go app, where is it? Uh, storage, yep, we have this file, it's executing. And then if we run kill, it should stop. Yep, it stopped, cool. 
So what I also want to do is create a way for us to like clear that file that gets created. Um, and I actually also want to clear that file when we execute the function because otherwise we're just going to have a buildup of files. So I'm going to make a function here called um, delete output file. Delete output. And it's going to check if there's an output file. So if there's that output file. And I also want to make sure that that exists. Then we want to delete it. And to delete a file in PHP, you run unlink and then the file name. And then after this is run, I want to set the upper file to null. And then save this model. And I actually also just realized with kill, we're not actually retaking, we're not kill it, getting rid of this PID. So I actually also want to set, we can run this, we can actually run update, update, and we'll set the PID is null. Because there's no more process, we've killed it. Cool. Um, so I actually think before we execute a function, we also want to delete its output. So we can go to this, delete output. And I also actually want to create a way to check if a process is running because I don't want to be able to delete output while a process is running. So let's make a function and call it is running. So the first thing I want to do here is check like if there is no process ID, just return false. We'll assume it's not running because even if it is, like there's no way to even kill it. So if there's no process ID, it's not running. If there is a process ID, we want to uh, basically use, there's a clear this. If we go ping google.com and then we echo out the process ID. So we get this process ID, let's copy it. And then in another terminal, we can go PSP and process, put that process ID. And then we can see that it's returning the ping command. If we go back here and kill this command and go back here, uh, it's still running. Um, let's just kill the command here. If we kill that command and we check if it's running, we don't get that line where it says the command that's running. So cool, we can track if it's running using the command, using that um, command line also. So we can go exec and we'll go um, PSP and then the process would be this process ID. And we want the output to go to out. And if out, if the count of out is greater than one, then we know it's running, so we'll return true. Otherwise, we'll return it's not false, it's not running. And that's because if we go here, back to, if we go like PSP, and what was that? This thing, we'll always have this as the output. So this will always be in the first element of the array. But if we, um, if we had a process running, it would come in the second element of the array. Cool, so now we can detect if a process is running and we can check if this is running, then we'll just return. Because I don't want to kill the, delete the file while the process is going on. And let's just add a semicolon here. So now we can check, we can execute a process, we can check if it's running, we can delete its output, we can kill the process, but we can't view the output. So I'm gonna make another function here called um, output. And it's gonna read the contents of the output file. So we're gonna first check if there is an output file. Well, if there isn't an output file, if there isn't an output file, <laughs> output file, then we're just gonna return nothing. And we need to make this a function. So if there's no output file, just return a blank array. Otherwise, we'll return the file. And what file does is it actually returns um, an entire file as um, as an array. So it splits each line into an element in the array. And the file name would be this output file. 
So now, if we go to PHP Eyes and Tinker, we get that process and then we execute it. So you can't pass null to uh, unlink and that's because here we're automatically deleting the output and this output, hmm. Oh, that's because this is a, I had two underscores, should be a, be a single one. So we go exit. Okay, let's go back to PHP Arts and Tinker, get that process. And I think we should be able to check if it's still running, at least. It is running, it's false. So if we go check that file, we should see the end of the output. So this was the first one, but if we go to this one, yep, we can see that it ended. Let's just delete this and try that whole thing again. So let's execute this process. Execute it. Cool, now we should be able to tell if it's running. It is running and we should be able to kill it. And then we should check if it's running again. It's not running, um, but the file should still be there. Yep, it's still here. I think we need a way to just, oh, and then we can delete the output. We have a way to do that. <laughs> and then we can just delete the output. Well, let's view the output by going output. Oh, that doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> we have to return the contents. So now if we reset this, should be able to go here, get the model and check the output. Yeah, okay, we get the output, awesome. Okay, cool. So now we have our model and our migrations working. What I want to do is create a front end for us to interact with these processes. And to do that, I'm going to be using Livewire. And Livewire is a, such a cool tool. It's, um, it's a way to make your GUI interactive or your front end interactive without having to reach for JavaScript. So what happens is um, when we click on something, it sends a post request to um, our server and our server responds with HTML. It's such a cool tool. Let's start off by just installing Livewire. So to do that, I'm just gonna to go to the Livewire docs, um, go here, and all we have to do is require Livewire. So I'm gonna to go to our project and require Livewire. And while that's working, I'm just gonna clear up our welcome.blade.php file. And this is gonna be like the main entry point into our web application. And you can see that, like if we hit the base path, we get, uh, we return this welcome.blade file. So let's just go to that welcome.blade file and clean it up. So we don't need these fonts, we don't need these styles. I'm gonna change the title of this application to process runner. Then we don't need this class on our body because we're not using Tailwind. And let's just get rid of everything inside of here. And I'm gonna, um, and I'm gonna to have to do a few things. So if we go to Livewire, um, we need to, once we've required it, we just need to add Livewire scripts and Livewire styles. So Livewire scripts goes here. Livewire styles goes in the head. And cool, let's make our first Livewire component. So, so I'm gonna clear this up and um, I'm gonna make a list of processes. So that's just gonna be our first basic component. So I'm gonna run PHP artisan uh, make Livewire. This is how you make a Livewire component and I'm gonna call it a process list. And it's just gonna be a list of all the processes that we have. So we go to process list. And it, this works exactly like, well, very similar to how a controller view relationship works, where we can just return data to the view um, using this view function. And here we wanna return our processes. And we're just gonna fetch all of our processes from the database. Cool, so let's go back to our welcome.blade file and let's add that uh, Livewire component here. So Livewire. And we want to add our process list component here. And let's just check that's working by going to that process list.blade file. And let's just uncomment this text that they've given us. The best athlete wants his opponent at his best. That's true. So PHP artisan serve, let's 
Let's go to the browser. Awesome, we're rendering our component. Let's now show a list of processes. So I'm gonna loop through all of these processes by using this blade um, function. So processes as process. And then I'm gonna make another live wire component in here. And I'm just gonna call it uh, process view. I think yeah, process view. And we'll pass through our process as our process. And just like React or anything like that, you need to pass through a key attribute. And the key is just gonna be the process ID. Once that's done, let's actually create this component. So I'm gonna uh, turn the server off, create another component here called process view, and clear it up, run our server again. Then um, we need to allow this view to take in a process. So let's open our process view component. And let's just add a process to the top here. So make it like a public process and we'll call it process and now we'll have access to that process in our process view so let's open up the process view file of the blade template and let's here yeah, we'll just echo out the process name process name we save this we refresh this we should see our process name awesome we're getting there now let's make a function to execute the process so i'm going to make a button here and I'm just gonna give it the text of, I'm gonna call it run. And when we click this, and to um, to use Livewire with a click, we just go like that, Livewire click, and this will call a click function inside of our, well, it will call a function inside of our view component. So I'm gonna call it uh, execute, and it's gonna just basically run the execute function that we have on our process. So let's go public function execute, and now what we'll do is we'll call the execute function on our process. So process and we'll execute it. Cool, so to check that this works, we can um, open up our storage here. Yeah, it's got this file here, let's delete it. We can refresh this, see our run function. If we run this, we'll know our process is running because we have a new file here and it's echoing to the file. So now let's make a way that we can kill this process. So let's go back to our process list. Well, not this one, our process view. And we'll make another function here called kill. And what this will do is it will kill our process. So we'll go back to process view, duplicate this. And all this will do is call the kill function on our process. So now if we refresh this, we have that kill function. If we click kill here, um, we'll see, yep, this is no longer being added to. We can delete this file. So now we can execute and we can kill a file, well, we can kill a process. Let's look at um, viewing the output for a process. So I actually just wanna do something here to like indicate that the process is running so that, you know, we can tell what to do. So we can check here uh, if process is running because we have that function. Let's just insert an emoji and that will be a rocket emoji. Otherwise, nothing. So now if we run this again, we can click run. We see it's running, we can kill it. It stops running. Um, and on, like with that, I think we should only have kill available if this process is running. So let's do an if here. And we'll end if. Cool, so now we should only be able to kill the process if it's running. So let's refresh this, run, Cool, it's running, we can kill it. Awesome. Now let's make a way that we can actually just view the output. And to do that, I wanna use Alpine.js. It's a super small, like it's a very lightweight uh, JavaScript framework, and it's perfect for minor interactions in the page, like um, exactly what, what, like what we're gonna do now. We're gonna show output or hide output. So let's go to Alpine and to install it, it's really easy. We just put this script in our header. So we go to welcome. A blade, we add our scripts here. And I just see that I've added Livewire scripts twice. Uh, let's see why I did that. This is supposed to be Livewire styles. No big. Go back to our view. And let's make a function to 
like show our output. So I'm gonna make a button here, I'm gonna call it show output. And when we click this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, refresh a variable, which is basically a string of our output in our, um, in our like process, so in our process component. So I'm gonna call a refresh output function, and it's just gonna get the last 10 lines of the file that gets output to. So we'll go to our process view and we'll create this function here, public function refresh output. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to assign to a variable called output. And let's make that variable. We'll make it at the top here. Let's make it a string, public string output. And this will be, uh, we'll implode and we'll join everything together with um, breakpoints. And we just want to get the last 10 lines of our upper file. So we'll go array slice. Uh, what's it? This. I think it's just output. Negative 10. Let's just double check that. Let's open the process. Yeah, it's just output. Cool. So now if we go back to our process runner, we refresh doesn't work and it's because we have an error on process view line 26. Let's see this, doesn't work. Um, let's go to line 26 and we need to put a semicolon. Go back here, refresh, show output, doesn't do anything because we don't have any output. If we run and we show output, we should see something. We haven't actually echoed anything out on the page. So <laughs> let's go back to our process view and let's just add like pre tags here and this will just show what's in our output. And we need to use these exclamation marks because we want to render uh, the HTML out. So I'll call this output, save this, and now, yep, that works. And it's updating and we kill it. We still have output to show. So what I want to do is change this where it toggles between show and hide. And well, yeah, let's do that first. So now we have Alpine installed. If we go back to the Alpine docs, we can scroll down here. They actually have a way, this exact example that we want, this basically toggle contents. So X data open, I'm gonna copy this, put it at the top here, oops, make sure I copy it. Cool, and when we, um, we only wanna show these contents when this open flag is set, so let's make a div, div here, and we'll add this, so x show if open is set to true, when you click outside, open is set to false, and when we click show output, we want to basically set um, this open is set to true, so open will be true here, and that should work. We're not running anything, show output, hide output, doesn't work. And why is that? Because we have click outside here. So we just want to unclick. Fresh, show output, hide output. Cool, that's working. Let's also just update this text so that um, if open is true, then we say hide output. Otherwise, we say show output. So we can change the text by going X text. And it's going to be if it's open, the text will be show output. Well, it would be hide output. And otherwise, it'll be show output. Save that, and this should work. Show output, hide output. Cool. Now let's make this actually refresh while our process is running. So I'm going to kill this process. What I'm going to do is when this is open, then we want to basically pull this refresh output function. And that's really easy to do in LiveWire, all you have to do is write wire.pull, well wire, pull.visible. So when this element is visible, we will run this refresh output function. And I think that's it, let's run, show output, and it should show the output, we'll hide it, no output, we can kill our process, boom. We're getting there guys. 
So what I wanna do is actually just add some basic styling because right now this looks a little bit junk. Um, and I'm pretty lazy, so I don't wanna go all tailwind. I'm gonna use this library that I found, which is basically classless CSS. It's called Sakura CSS. So let's search for that. And super easy to install. All we need to do is use the CDN, put it in our welcome.blade file. We just put it here at the top, save this, go back. Yeah. Ah, oh, and it looks beautiful. So now we can run this process, show the output. The output will display. We can hide the output. And cool. So now the last thing I want to do here is just make a way, a way that we can add a process. So let's go back to our process, well, to our welcome play file. And I want to make a new component here. I'm just going to call it process form. So live wire. And let's make that component. Live wire, make live wire, and we'll call this process form. And let's open that form. And all we need here really is will be two inputs. Type will be text for both. And we want to bind these to attributes inside of our, um, our process form. And we basically want one to reflect the name of the, com the process and one to be the command. So we'll make two variables here, both strings. One will be the name and one will be the command. And we'll need a function here basically to just store this process once we've entered those fields. So we'll make a function here. We'll call it store and we'll create this process using the create function. So create and we'll pass through the name as our name and the command is the command. And we just need to reference these using this. And I also just want to validate that these actually have values. So to do that, we can run this validate and we can pass through some rules on these attributes. Just uses this syntax where we have a hashtag and then we pass through a rule and we import this rule class from Livewire. And the rule that we want to invoke here is that it's required. And we want to do the same for our command. That should be that. Let's go back to our process form and let's link these inputs up with um, these values. And to do that, it's really easy. We just go wire model and this will be the name model and this will be the command model. And let's give these both placeholders. So placeholder will be name and here placeholder will be command. To refresh this and see what we have. Uh, we need to start our server again. Cool. So let's just add like a plus button here. Let's make it an emoji. And when we click this, we'll basically create a new command. Let's hook this up to our form. So this will be type of submit. And we need to wrap this inside of a form. When you click this, we need the form to actually call the store function. So to that, we just go wire, I think it's wire submit, and we pass through store. 
and this should work let me just make some space this should work but i want something to just display those errors that we'll get if these fields are empty um and to do that we're just going to use um, this error handler so if there's an error for name then we'll display that error here and if there is an error for command then we'll display that error here and then that will just be echoed out in this message variable so we should do this do this and if we refresh this and try save cool this name field is required the command field is required let's pretend it looks nicer than it does let's make another one called ping microsoft and this will just be ping microsoft.com we'll add it okay so now we just need to make sure that it refreshes the page and it clears the input and to do that what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to redirect after we submit this form and i'm just going to redirect back to our page so just basically refresh the page redirect and if we let's make a new command it's who should we ping now yahoo.com picking up the scraps ah and i called it ping cool so now we should like be able to ping microsoft show the output hide the output kill it's ping google show the output hide the output kill um I think that's it. The next step is to actually just package this into a desktop application. But let's actually, before we do that, I want to make it look a little bit nicer. And I am going to just in the process of view, I don't know, wrap this in a P. That's the easiest way to make give it like a space. Does this work? Yeah. I don't know. You know, it doesn't look great, but that's fine. So now we have that our Laravel app up and running. We can create and run processes. So now I want to make it a desktop application. And to do that, I'm going to be using native PHP, which is an awesome tool to basically create an Electron app out of our PHP application. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install native PHP. So let's go on to native PHP, go to installation. Keep in mind that this is in alpha and is not production ready, but I don't know, still pretty cool. Let's go back here and let's use Composer and install native PHP. Would you like to start native PHP development server? Let's say yes and just see what happens. Cool, and we actually get ourselves like a little desktop application, which because it's Electron, we can see our uh, inspector here. And we can see that, okay, cool, we don't have a database. So let's migrate our database. So one thing is, is that even though we do have a database, we're using that database.sqlite, um, native PHP uses uh, native.sqlite. So we need to run migrate again. So we can go PHP artisan native migrate. And now we should have our table. So it's created all the tables that we need. And now we can go uh, PHP artisan native serve and we'll see our desktop app again goes here but we don't have any commands because this is a fresh database so let's just make one we'll go ping google and we'll ping google.com let's create that let's run it and let's show the output cool and we're pinging google Let's kill this. I don't want this to be like an app like that. I want it to be a menu application. So pretty much all of the, the native setup is done in we go native app service provider. So here I actually don't want to run the window open um, function. I want it to be a menu application. So a menu by application, which I can just click here and run. So let's just go to back to native PHP and let's look at how we can do that menu bar, working with the menu bar. You see it creates a little app here that we can just use. So menu bar create, we'll call that. Let's paste this here. 
and we'll import it from the facade. Cool. And let's see what other options we have. Uh, label, root, URL, no, no, no. Cool, I wanna add an icon, so let's just see. So let's do this, copy paste this, put this in here. We'll just need to add our menu bar, our menu bar icon to the app path in storage. So fortunately I have some icons here and I've called them menu bar icon and menu bar icon add to X and this is for retina displays. So I'm just gonna take these and I'm gonna put them in storage and app. So let's move them here. So that'll be our little icon that'll display here. And I think it's just like a picture of a terminal. Yeah, if you can see that, beautiful. Cool, let's see what else. I think I just want to, at this point, just change the window size. Yeah, so width and height, 800 by 600, it's a bit big. Uh, let's make it 600 by 600. Cool, so now if we go on, I'm not so sure why I'm getting squigglies here. Why? I don't know. It's clear. Let's run PHP Artisan's native serve. We should see our app run on the side here. Okay. We have this. It's not showing our icon though, for some reason. And that's because I didn't change the name of it. Let's go back here to our menu bar icon and rename this or we'll get rid of the template text, save this. Cool, and it changed our icon, which is great. Cool, and now we have like a, a running desktop application, which is so cool. The last thing that I wanna do is I wanna make a hotkey and when I press the hotkey, this window opens. So in order to register the global hotkey, we'll need to import the global shortcut class and I think if we go here, we just go to global hotkeys. It's exactly what we want to do. We want to register a shortcut. So let's just copy paste this. And let's just copy paste the import as well. Just one facade. Awesome. Um, command or control shift A. Let's do alt shift C for command. So alt plus shift plus C. Then we need to create an event. I'm gonna make like an open app event. So let's, I think we can just use like a normal Laravel event. So we go PHP artisan make event. I'm gonna call it open app. Awesome. Let's go to our open app event. And I'm not actually gonna broadcast any messages. I just want this, like, I just want this event to fire. So let's just get rid of these. We don't need this, we don't need this, not this, not this. We just really need the constructor. <laughs> and all I'm gonna do here is I want it to show the menu bar. So if we go to menu bar and let's see how we can show the menu bar. Cool, opening the menu bar. You may use the menu bar show method to manually open the menu bar. That's exactly what I want. Let's put this here, save. And now I should be able to go, what do we have? Alt shift C, so Alt shift C. Hmm, let's restart the app maybe. Cool, let's, let's press Alt Shift C. And it's not working and I just realized <laughs> it's because this is not the right event. The event is open app. So let's save that. I saw it restart here, uh, Alt Shift C. Let's see what's going on here. Ah, we're not importing menu bar. So let's import menu bar. Save this. Alt Shift C. There we go. It opens. Cool. So now we can at any time press Alt Shift C and we can run a command, show the output, um, kill the output, show the output, hide the output. This app is awesome. Besides the fact that we can't delete processes, but if you want to, you could add that in. Code for this is in the description below. This, oh, you know what we can do? Let's actually build this. Right now, it's just like a, a demo project. Let's actually build this into an application. I'm running on Linux, so I'm gonna build this as a, a, um, as a Debian file. So let's go building, 
Um, PHP, this is so easy. <laughs> this is crazy. So it's PHP Artisan native build Linux. And I think what this is gonna do is it's just gonna give us a disk file. Um, okay, cool, we've built it, it's called Laravel. And I think that's because of the name in our app name. So I'm actually gonna change this to process runner. Save it. Um, let's delete this disk file, where is it? Delete this. Rerun the build. Let's clear this. Cool, yeah, and now it's called process runner. Once that's done, we have this Debian file. So I'm just gonna drag this in my terminal and I'm gonna install it. Um, sudo apt install. Once that's done, I think we should be able to run. Process, okay, we can change this icon, but uh, look at that. We have a new app. Let's create a ping google.com command here. Add it, run it, show the output, kill it. That's awesome. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, if you did like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, and also check that cool animation that happens now on YouTube when I say like and subscribe. So how cool is that? Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Bye.